Hello and welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. Uh, my partner Dave Serrano is currently uh, in the Boston area doing some uh, showball showcase events. A uh, little busy and so I'm going to drive solo today. Really excited about our guest this evening because I'm a New England guy. Our guest is a New England guy. You don't find many big leaguers uh, coming from the New England area. You, you find a few, uh, but it's always fun to follow. And that's something that I did. You know, Brooke Fordyce, former Major League catcher, really uh, tremendous, solid, defensive, offensive-minded catcher. Now a college coach at a level and division that I think is going to really intrigue a lot of parents. The NAIA Division II, located in West Palm Beach, Florida, Kaiser. Uh, and uh, Brooke, first of all, thank you for joining me tonight. Well, appreciate it. Uh, love, I'm glad I could be with you, Walter. Well, I think one of the reasons why I was so intrigued and interested in having you on, Brooke, is because NAIA is all the, it's, it's, it's really with the portal and the JUCOs and a lot of these high school athletes, they're all discovering NAIA baseball. What intrigued you as far as taking over that type, that program in West Palm, Florida, uh, West Palm Beach, Florida? And tell us a little bit about Kaiser. So, so first off, I was I was in youth baseball and high school baseball coaching, and you know, just staying in in the game because I love it. And then I had a good friend reach out to me and say, "There's an opportunity here at Kaiser University in West Palm, and I live about an hour north in Martin County." So uh, I was a little hesitant, um, and, and hesitant was, "What do I have to offer?" Right, you know, as a college as a college coach, and uh, went down, uh, viewed the campus up and coming building uh, campus and school with Kaiser and uh, so thought this would be a great opportunity for me uh, to just keep developing and also stay in the game that I love. Well, you know, as I was prepping for, for our conversation, you know, and looking at your roster, really intrigued. So the first thing is, is that, you know, parents that talk about, you know, colleges in their backyard, one look at your roster and it's really, we have, we have student athletes from all over the globe, actually. But I'd like you to discuss the power of the portal and the fact that you have student athletes from New England. You have student athletes from uh, Louisiana, Hudson, Massachusetts. I mean, you have a lot of uh, area that you cover with regard to recruiting. And how do you work within that portal now that it's become an integral part of, of college baseball? Right. So the the part uh, the portal is good. It's a good thing and a bad thing. Unfortunately, uh, I, I don't I'm not sure I agree with the ability to change so frequently where I think you should work through things. But for our point at this point in stage, you know, the portal is huge for us. You know, like you said, our, our roster is intriguing. We've had UConn former UConn, Notre Dame, Creighton, Dallas Baptist, you know, Marshall, like you said. So what we do is, is we follow the portal as well. And, and there's a home for everybody. There's more and more baseball players out there that should enjoy the game, should love the passion of it and still play it throughout their college years. And, and so Kaiser, um, our niche, I believe, is to, to be that home for where maybe somebody went to a bigger brand name or a bigger school and was lost in the shuffle. And all he wants to do is play, play competitive, win some baseball games and get his education, most importantly. So, you know, we, that's our niche, I believe. You know, I want I want to kind of bring that out a little bit because I I know that you can relate to this. You know, here in New England, we have football, we have hockey. You know, it, it's not the weather that is not conducive to playing baseball all year round. So I grew up and there was a genuine love and affinity for the game. You know, playing it in forty degrees, playing it in frozen drizzle. You know, and you're down there in West Palm Beach, Florida. But my point is, is that the point you just made, baseball is something that you should exhaust as long as you have a passion and a love for the sport. And so many parents and student athletes are driven by those, you know, marquee names and conferences. So talk a little bit about, you know, the Sun Conference, the NAIA down in your neck of the woods with St. Thomas, uh, just about the caliber of baseball. And, you know, as you mentioned, the love of the sport that allows these student athletes to extend their careers beyond high school. Absolutely. So NAIA baseball is growing. Uh, we happen to be in I, what I believe is the toughest conference, the Sun Conference. You have Southeastern, you have St. Thomas, you have Weber and ourselves. And and when I say the 
equivalent of talent that we have on our team, uh, I would say is a mid-major uh, D1 to, to low D1. We do. We have that. Our starting nine is solid. It's former D1 players and top two coach. So, you know, for us to say, hey, come down to, to West Palm, you've got the weather right? You've got the beaches, you've got great baseball and, and get an education. And, and again, I, I'm emphasizing the education because I still think that getting an ed college education is has tremendous value and will have tremendous value in the future. Well, I think that's what it, the end game should be for the vast majority of student athletes that participate at the college level is trading athletic ability for uh, academic excellence. Now, when I say that, uh, academic excellence for some could be just getting the opportunity to obtain an affordable degree that's going to you know help you with regard to your future as a spouse and as a parent and so forth so can you talk about expectations you know uh, you pl you've played the game at the pinnacle the highest level possible you know and you you never want to you know uh, shoot anyone's dreams down but can you talk about how hard the game is at the college level and whether it's NAI or NCAA, uh, NCAA, I mean, just talk about how hard it is to being a college student athlete. It, it, it's extremely hard. And I don't sugarcoat things. Uh, I came out of high school. Uh, I was a third round pick by the Mets. And, uh, you know, I, I had a successful career. But I try to tell everybody what you guys see on TV and what you see is only 10%, maybe 15% of what those guys are going through, right? So, you know, I come here and tell them first and foremost, okay, baseball, it, it's therapy for us, right? We get out, we get to be outside, we get to compete, we get those juices flowing. But it truly, at the end of the lifespan of a human being, is just short-lived, right? So you get to meet great people stick around with, you know, some good teammates, maybe network from there. So I build in the real life because I already told them I'm 1%, right? And I can't relate. It, I take, for a lack of a better term, I always, I always say this. How does 99% relate to the 1%? So my object is to do that and say, first and foremost, anytime I stepped on a baseball field, I loved it, tried to be the best. And try to be in a classroom, I loved it, tried to be the best. Like, I try to have a passion what I'm doing so that my my skill set and hopefully my success comes out in it. And a lot of these guys have trust trust issues. OK, they went to Notre Dame. They went to these bigger schools and they felt the love during the recruiting process. Right. Oh, we love you. Come, come. And then, you know, egos and feelings got in the way. And and so they're a little bit hurt. So first and foremost, before we can be a baseball player on my team, we form a relationship. We really do. And here's what I'm like. This is as a coach. And what are you like as a player? And then from there, if you can trust me, then we can build whatever on top of that. I think it's critical when you're going through a recruiting process. You know, it's not so much from a parent's perspective, but a student athlete's perspective. You need to know that your coach or your coaching staff is going to take and, and help you become the best version of yourself possible. But a lot of the weight or burden of that is on the student athlete. So if you can kind of take me through a, you know, a freshman coming in in the fall or first year student at Kaiser, what do you do as a coaching staff to help develop that rapport and help build that confidence from within the athlete to allow them to become the best that they're capable of becoming? So, so what I usually do is on the visits where they bring the parents, I sit them down and we talk about what success looks like, not on my part, not on Kaiser's part, but on this individual. And I said, first and foremost, we're extended family. OK, when you first leave your parents, you want somebody you can trust because there's going to be trips. There's going to be falls and somebody catch you to pick you back up. Right. So so that's the first and foremost. The second thing is, is that I say right now we have four years to develop and to know who we are a little bit better. When you find out who you are, what you are, then all the other things come out, right? So if you know who you are, you know what you need to do to be a better baseball player. Certain people, I tell them, are looking for some coach or some school to make them better. And it doesn't come from there. It won't. It comes from within. Our object is to recruit like-minded players and coaches so that we're all on the same path. We understand there's no one greater force moving this. And we do. We have some success, but it all starts on 
each individual, each coach must know who they are and what their strengths are and how to use them to better the team. Well, on that note, I'd like you to speak because you're going to be able to offer some great perspective here. You know, a lot of student athletes get bogged down in their day-to-day statistics. You know, I, they're, they're wearing an O for, for a couple of games and they're taking that into that fourth or fifth game. Can you talk about the mental uh, development, both at the collegiate level and the professional level that's necessary in order for those athletes to live in the present, but to be able to flush the past. Right. So that's a good question. So one of my speeches with, with the transfers, the older guys that come here, I try to tell them, do you know the difference between a college player and a minor league player? And then from a minor league player to a major league player, it is not a skill set. It's not a strength. It's not a size for the most part. The man who makes it or the person who makes it, it's the 20% that hasn't been developed in between the years, right? So that's where we really hone in on, right? Because all these kids with the added pressure from social media and all these things, I got to be the best. I got to be the best 12-year-old, the best 13-year-old. And that should come within, that should be an internal thing rather than external. And there's so many external forces that I don't think are right for youth sports right now. When I played it, I wanted to be like Fred Lynn. I wanted to be Yaskremski. I did that for me, not for anybody else. And I think if we can get back to that, again, knowing who you are, then we see some quick, real development in a short period of time to help Kaiser, help us and help themselves. I, I cannot agree more. And, and mine was Fisk, Yaz, and, and Fred Lynn. So we're all on the same path right there. <laughs> Can you talk to me a little bit about, I just want to get your, your thoughts or your opinions on the weight of expectation that social media creates. In other words, we just went through the draft and we see all these highlight videos and student athletes think they have to live up to this, uh, this hype machine. But in reality, you know, and I don't like to use this word, the grind of development occurs at different times for, for different student athletes, whether it's physicality, whether it's skill set development, mental uh, development. Can you just talk about that as far as the weight of expectation that social media can place on younger student athletes? It, it, it does. Um, and, and it's a hard, it's a hard fight to, to battle against. Um, but you know, when I go on there, I look at what other coaches doing or whatever, you know, and, and and it just becomes a comparable thing, right? I can't compare myself to anybody. And that's what I learned, right? When I grew up, they were great catchers, you know, and I was like, okay, well, I'm not them. And I think that's the first thing these kids need to do. Who am I? Because social media will tell you you have to throw 100 miles an hour. You have to hit the ball 500 feet, right? Well, good Lord, you know, you might as well, you know, I don't know, take up another job because right. the expectations, you know, of, of this is, is, is too high. You know, it's too high, but we do that all the time. You know, Hey coach, I come in here, I got to throw 95. I said, okay, throw 95, but can we throw it over 17 and a half inches of the plate, which allows me to put you into the position to pitch and be better? No coach. I need to throw 95. That's what everybody tells me. And then I ask who's everybody. And they revert to social media, so-and-so and so-and-so. And And I'm like, are you them? Did they throw 95? Like, So it's really a hard thing to fight. But again, if I can get them back into knowing who they are and what they do well, then they can have that success. And, And when you have your own success for who you are and what you have to offer, I believe the sky's unlimited. Greg Maddox. Exactly. Used to throw 92, 93, pitch really good at 86 to 88. So again, I, I just wish there's more guys who, who who went internal than external for some answers. So when you're out on in your recruiting, are you out in some of these bigger summer events? Or, uh, are you strictly focused on those student athletes in your geographical area that as far as the incoming potential high school senior? Uh, how do you handle as a staff? from a recruiting perspective and how would you like to be contacted by potential student athletes? So the recruiting is a tough business, right? You, you, you can't be everywhere. So, but th- our coaches are out at the local events. We have perfect game right down the street here at the nationals and Astros facility up in Jupiter, Marlins and Cardinals. So our coaches are there, but coaches are on the phone. I'm on the phone following up 
making sure my contacts with my other coaches are good so that referrals are, are, are true, right? With the relationship and the honesty are there. So it's a tough, tough game, but we're always out there. And always, I'm always, I'm always looking at my email. I'm always taking, you know, my, my, my Twitter account, which I do have through Kaiser. Um, I'm looking at recruits. So yes, I'm out there um, looking for, and I am reachable through email, right? At my school email, Twitter, uh, I don't do cell phones because then it becomes too much. You know, I got to be able to turn that 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 thing off once in a while um, and enjoy my family as well. So um, school email, Twitter account, um, I, I'm open to anything. So we're going to have that for everybody that's watching. We're going to have all that information down below so that you can uh, contact Coach Fordyce and be able to send him an email, follow him on Twitter, find out when their pr uh, prospect camps are, et cetera. One of the things that I would really like you to, you know, kind of explain to the student athlete more than the parent mm -hmm. is the ability to be coached. I see a lot of former major leaguers now getting involved in college baseball at all mm -hmm. levels. You know, you got Troy Tulowinski, you got the Halliday and the Robin Venturas of the world uh, at, at OSU. But <clears throat> I think it allows student athletes to be learning the game from the best of the best. Can you just talk about that dynamic? Because you might have the ability to be, from a refinement standpoint or a peace of mind standpoint, be able to take a student athlete and really, you know, polish them up from a lump of coal to a diamond by the time they spend some time with you and your staff. Yeah. So, so, and I'm going to point to social media again. There's a lot of hitting coaches, a lot of pitching coaches, a lot of this. Okay. And they're all good. Don't get me wrong. I, I, there's, I, you can learn something from somebody anywhere, but, but here's the thing. When you play the game, you have to know what you can do. Right. So for me, I competed and I'm going to use the word compete. Sometimes I didn't know if I should have been on the right side of the box, the left side of the box, but I competed and tried to beat the guy on the mound for one more pitch or one more hit. And I think we need to get back to being more competitive and competitive is not bad. Okay. Competitive is not bad when you do it for the right reasons and then decompress it at the end when a win or loss, because you still win at the end of a loss, if you learn from it. Right. So I think competing is what you really need to do. Not saying, oh my God, that's the best swing I've ever seen because if it can't compete with a Greg Maddox six pitch mix, <laughs> you know, you're out anyhow. So so I love the competitiveness uh, in, in, in everything and not a bad competitiveness, just a challenge for you to say, hey, I'm engaging in the challenge in front of me and I'm going to go out at full force and see what happens. I love that. I, I, I wish more people understood the, the foundation of that is every pitch you, you're competing, whether you're, you know, in a defensive position, an offensive position, it's pitch by pitch. It's, it's not a boring game. I promise you, if you're into it, competing every single pitch. And I, I knew this was going to be an engaging conversation. And I was really excited personally about being able to speak with you uh, today. I would love for you to kind of, summarize for those parents that are thinking, yeah, my son's never going to get to West Palm Beach. What makes Kaiser University unique and, and why should parents or student athletes consider, you know, that with regard to the college academic as well as athletic, uh, their future? So, so I'm going on my seventh year. OK, and I think Kaiser has been around this. This is the flagship. This is the legacy here. Uh, the flagship's been around maybe nine to 10 years in, in West Palm. So I've been here going on seven and I've seen nothing but support from the top, both at academically getting better, uh, money coming in for our facilities. This school is relatively new. Um but it's growing and the commitment from uh, the above is there. And so I, I'm part of something, right? I'm part of building something that's in anything I do. I want to build something, be part of it, make it better, make it better, make it better. And the Kaiser experience has grown in seven years and exponentially is going to grow because I know there's allocated money coming in the next five to 10 years. And I would love to stick around and be and see what this turns out to be. But I'm just glad I'm part of something bigger than me that I can help and, and grow as well. Well, Brooke, I want to say thank you for sharing some time uh, with me today. 
<clears throat> I told Dave, I don't know if you know this or not, it was just announced, but Dave Serrano just took a uh, head coaching position, NAIA Division II in Knoxville, Tennessee. So uh, I'm sure you'll be seeing him in the recruiting trail at some point, but uh, he says to say hello as well. I am really uh, thankful uh, that you took the time to join us. Uh, I know parents and student athletes are really excited as they're learning uh, about NAIA opportunities. Uh, and I'm going to encourage all parents and student athletes, take a few minutes, go on, uh, you know, Internet, Google, Kaiser University, look up Coach Fordyce. I mean, we're talking about an elite baseball mentor, a mentor of life, not just the sport. And, and really take some time and do some due diligence. And I think you'll be really pleasantly surprised at the opportunities that schools that, throughout the Sun Conference offer and the caliber and quality of the academics as well as the athletics is definitely going to fit your, your student athlete. So, Brooke, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Walter, I appreciate it, and uh, you can see the passion. I love baseball, love talking, and and if I can be assistance, always uh, reach out and bounce questions off me. Uh, that only makes you guys wiser on what you know or what you might need to know going in the future. Well, I'm going to take you up on that in the future, and and for those of you that you know, we talk a lot on social media. This is a true baseball man. So if nothing else, you want to give him a follow on Twitter because he knows the game of baseball. He's a New Englander. He's got the heart. He's got the soul. Most importantly, he and I use the both the same word, passion. We It's in our blood. Baseball is, we are passionate about baseball. So, Brooke, best of luck going forward. I, I hope to send some guys your way. If I can ever be of any help, please reach out. Same thing with Coach Serrano. Thank you to everyone who joins us each and every week. I want to bring to your attention two things. One, this is a baseball blue book. Uh, broadcast, as well as one of our new uh, sponsors here is Six Tool, uh, which is a new app that focuses on baseball curriculum and the knowledge of the sport, which is something that a lot of student athletes uh, are, are lacking because of the limited amount of practice time. So join us next week. Next week, we're going to have the head coach at Holy Cross University. And the following week, we're going to have the head coach at East Carolina University, Cliff Godwin. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. Best of luck this week in baseball.